Hello and welcome to part one of webinar series two. And this one is on UPVC doors. So here you can see a single leaf door. They independently move. And the single leaf door is the most common variety of door. It features a single panel that fills the entire doorway. So this image is of double leaf doors, also known as French doors. They have two panes that open. The door that opens first is known as the master or the active leaf. And the door that opens second is known as the slave leaf or the inactive leaf. Double doors are panes within a frame, but these are hinged and opening inwards or outwards rather than being sliding behind one or another. So this image is to show a door with two fixed glazed side panels. And here we have um, the image of a sliding door. So it's a double leaf door or a slider, which is sometimes called a patio door, probably due to the location because they open out onto patios very often. And these sliding doors are made with separate panes that sit within the frames. So one or more of the panes slide in front of the other to open and close the door. So here we have another image of a set of French or double doors. But this one is a slightly different because it has what we would call a fan light or a top light above the door. So that glazed panel that runs along the top of the set of double doors. So let's have a little look at the history of UPVC doors. The first UPVC windows were installed in Germany in 1959. And it wasn't until the 1980s that they began to be used in the UK. They started to replace the double glazed aluminium windows in popularity and they did not require the use of timber frames. So they required less maintenance and were less prone to condensation than the original aluminium ones. They were also easier to produce and were much more cost effective. So they were the product of choice for the majority of householders for doors and for windows. Recently, the use of UPVC doors as front doors has become less popular with the advent of other door types but they do remain popular for doors within properties in the UK. So as the plastic on its own would have been insufficient for strength, reinforcement is used within the door. The reinforcement may be steel, aluminium, or more recently composite materials. The reinforcement not only provides strength and rigidity, but it also allows for better screw retention when fixing items such as hinges and locks. The reinforcement also helps to prevent expansion during warm weather, which may cause the door to become more difficult to operate and also contraction during the cold weather, which may cause the door to become more drafty. This temperature related expansion and contraction is also referred to as thermal movement. So you can see some of the advantages here on this slide of UPVC. Things like the frames are very lightweight and durable and resistant to things like pollution. They may need a little bit of maintenance and regular cleaning. They are a good thermal insulator. They look very modern, so it's very suitable for contemporary buildings. And they can be cheaper than timber windows or timber doors, so they do provide a value for money for customers. So disadvantages, um, they can become discolored as a result of exposure to the sun. They can look plain and unstylish and may not be suitable for listed buildings or conservation areas, and they do have a shorter lifespan than timber sometimes. So let's have a look at some commonly used terms in relation to UPVC. So the first one would be profile. This refers to the UPVC section that makes up the window or the door system. It may also mean the manufacturer or the extruder of the UPVC. So in the UK, we've got people like Vika, Uracil, Comeling, that sort of thing. Then we would look at something like the outer frame. So that term is for the frame of the window or the door perimeter where it attaches to the building structure. The sash, this refers to the section of the door or the window that moves. The mid rail, this is a horizontal rail of a door usually around the middle or just a little bit lower. The bead, this is a section that goes around the perimeter of the glazing to secure that glass or glazing in place. Welds, 
This is the member uh, method by which the sections are joined together to form a framework. So they're usually mitered before being joined by heating. Prior to this method, they were mechanically jointed or screwed in place. The reinforcement, which we've already touched on, so a steel, aluminium or composite material contained within the profile to provide that strength and rigidity. The hinge side, this is the side of the door where the hinges are fitted. And then the lock side, this is the side of the door and where the lock is fitted. And care needs to be taken as some people will give detailed views from say the inside when actually it should be done from when you're viewing outside. So when measuring, you would be looking from the outside and the lock side would be on the um, from the outside of the door. So the threshold, you can see for this from this image that it is a step at the bottom of the door um, separating the inside from the outside. And you can have low thresholds or you can have um, part M compliant thresholds, which are a low threshold or a four sided frame. Here we've got the sill, can also be known as a subsill. And this is the um, cover that projects out from the bottom of the door of the window, as you can see in this image. And it may also be fitted underneath the threshold. Sills come in different sizes and that determines how far they jet out from the door. So this diagram shows the Euro groove. Um, it's a standard feature in a UPVC uh, product. It is a 16 mil wide groove on a window or a door profile into which the hardware is fitted. The location of this groove, though, varies from one profile manufacturer to another. So there's um, a diagram here with the anatomy of a door uh, and, and its frame. Um, the head is the top section of a door or window, the horizontal part. The jam is the section at the side of a window or a door, so it's a vertical part. A mullion is the vertical section between glazed areas. So this door is a solid door, but if we had a glazed door, it would be the section between the glazed areas. A floating mullion is a vertical section between two sashes. For example, in the set of double doors where we looked at an image earlier on, a floating mullion would be fixed to the slave door leaf and then um, have keeps fitted to that element. So this gives us another um, view of some common parts in a UBPVC double door set. So you can see from this slide um, some of the, the parts I mentioned earlier, but you can also see how they fit together as a double door set with a fan light along the top there of this image. So a sealed unit. A sealed unit consists of a minimum of two panes of glass separated by some form of spacer and then hermetically sealed. So dependent on the type of spacer bar that is used, it is filled with a product called desiccant, which is a molecular sieve similar to those little packets of uh, silica gel that you find in your new shoe box, for example. And the purpose of this desiccant is to absorb any moisture in that cavity of the sealed unit after it's been sealed. So this image is of an infill panel, quite common in uh, UPVC doors. They are materials used instead of sealed units. So they perform a similar task, but they're usually used for insulating or decorative purposes. So they may contain glass and some may contain reinforcement materials such as timber or steel. So here you can see an image of a gasket. So this is a weather seal for the perimeter of the door, window or glazed aperture. So we're coming near the end of this session and here we can see um, some profile packers. They're a plastic component used with keeps. They fit to the reverse side of a keep to position the keep in the correct position relative to the lock. They vary to suit the profile and the profile manufacturer. So thank you very much for listening to part one in our second series of webinars on UPVC doors and some of the products that we have for this type of external door. We did run a series one, which has three parts on composite doors, which could be found on UAP's YouTube channel. And part two of this series will be on door locks that are suitable for UPVC doors.